Hello and welcome back to Bandit Lord. Now, I've actually just realized that this is a fantastic location for a Kuzate town because, of course, I've tried to keep the Kuzate very friendly to us for the most part. And uh, that has enabled us to have a friendly, yeah, friendly ish, shall we say, faction for us to go to whenever we need a little bit of a hideout. And uh, this is actually pretty good. Because what I will now be able to do... Actually, I'm just going to oh, escort Merchant Caravan. You know, <laughs> maybe I should do that. I don't know, really, because I only have 18 units. Uh, it's going to be kind of harsh. Uh, actually, you know what? I could just recruit a whole bunch of people and then take the escort uh, escort quest and see what happens. Uh, it might work. It might work, but it really depends on how much she wants to pay because my horse butcher at the moment at Makeb is literally giving me 34. It is kind of awful. And uh, I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. I actually thought that it might be quite good because the amount of horses that they have in the marketplace there is quite exponential. So it's a bit weird that we're not getting a, a good amount there. But let's actually just speak to her and see how much she's actually going to give us because I was planning on launching my various raids from this area but i'm thinking if uh if she's going to give me a good amount of cash then uh, oh nothing okay i have no idea right <laughs> uh uh mm, yes mm. i'm not entirely sure about this to be honest okay i guess what i'll do is i'll recruit a bunch of bandit brigands. I'll recruit like... Uh, I, I guess I'll get 40 of them. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. But I am going to... Oh no, thankfully she is actually going this way. Whew. I was a bit worried there for a second. Because if she went into Empire territory, we would have a huge problem on our hands. But thankfully that is not the case. Bear in mind that what I will be doing now is if... <laughs> <laughs> if something happens really, really badly, so for example, if we get in a situation where I'm probably going to get killed by an enemy vassal or something like that, then what I would do is I would just disband all of these bandit brigands and I would just run for it. That's literally what I can do as a bandit at this point. I, f I personally feel like it is going to be probably one of the best ways that we can do it. And... I just hope that we won't get attacked. We might get attacked here. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we won't. So let's see. I, I think that if anything, she's probably going to get attacked at this town right here. I think that's probably going to be the case. And if she does, I'm going to get ready. Yep, there we go. Okay, 40. Wow, there's actually 40 bandits. That's fantastic. How much? What do they have, though? I can't actually tell what they have in their army. I can assume it's probably going to be Step Bandits or something like that. Uh, yeah, Step Bandits, 19, Marauders, 11, Raiders, 10. So they are all on horses. But my units are pretty good when it comes to dealing with horses, or at least I hope they're going to be kind of good. And it's just unfortunate that we have to fight on such a terribly bad battlefield. It's really going to be kind of harsh for us. But we do have a number of uh, people from the caravan themselves that are actually... Um, well, we can't even... We, we can't do anything with them. We can't command them at all. So uh, it seems like I will have to get up my... Ah! No. Okay. That's not going to work. <laughs> uh, yes. The classic. There we go. Let's try and do some damage. Try and do some damage. Try and stop them a little bit. Try and take them down a little here and there. And we're just going to tell my forces just to charge in here, I suppose. That seems to be the best way to do do things. And, oh, wow, I really wish I had a horse now, you know. That's kind of a thing that is a bit of a shame, to be honest. Ah, there we go, there we go. Nice. You know, I personally feel like the overhead is really hard to hit nowadays. Because it actually will go from one side of the opponent. So basically what will happen is, if you try to do an overhead... It will go either on the left side or on the right side of your character. So you can see that it's going on the left right now. But sometimes it will go on the right. And uh, but wait, wait a minute. Does it, does it only go on the left? I've always thought that it goes on the right as well, but apparently not. Oh, well, never mind. Maybe I'm maybe, maybe I'm being a little bit silly here. But uh, yeah, well, 
Whatever the case. Ah, how dare you. Okay, I'm just going to bring out my spear. Nice. Nice damage. Try and take him out. Are you serious right now? His horse survived those, those pokes? I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. Okay, we're actually losing quite a few units at the moment. And I'm not entirely sure what I can do about it, to be honest. I guess what we can do is actually tell our people just to hold position here. And stop chasing after the horse archers. Because those guys are going to eventually be... Uh, probably going to be running into us at some point. Here we go. Nice, nice damage. Can I... Ah, no, no. Yep, okay, that guy. Yep, he's down. He's down. He's down. Okay, now I can deal with him a little bit better. Nice. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. Okay. Whew. That was a little bit close for my liking. Thank you. Okay, so... Oh, here we go. Nice. Oh, <laughs> oh hilarious. For them to literally kill themselves on my polearm. Pretty cool. I actually like the uh, the way that we're playing here for the moment. Uh, we're, we seem to be doing all right. But we do need to be a bit careful about the caravan as well. Because, of course, the caravan does not want to be eliminated at this point. Not at all. So I'm just going to continue to do as much damage as I can. And hopefully my bandits, ironclads, and things like that will, will continue to do a good job. Okay, here we go. Hello. Nice, you're dead. And I think we're good. I think we're actually good. I think we might have an opportunity to win this. It seems like most of... The, I'm not going to say most, but it seems like some of the caravan are actually still alive. Which is amazing. There we go. Take out that guy as well. I told you that this pole arm was going to come in handy. Oh yes, it's coming mighty handy. And uh, maybe we can... There we go. Do some extra damage. Oh, nice. Okay. So technically, I could get on this guy's horse. No, never mind. I couldn't get on his horse. <laughs> oh, my riding skill is that awful. Yes, it is indeed that awful. Oh, hello. Yes, please charge at me. I have a very long pole arm. Yes. A very long pole arm indeed. Well, that was mistimed pretty badly. There you go, though. We've increased our relation with her. Fantastic that we won the battle. Can't believe it, to be honest. We lost 18 units. And quite a few of our brigands and things like that were killed. That is to be expected, though. And that's the main reason why I actually recruited a bunch of them as well. Because it means that we are now able to um, level some more up. And replace the higher tier units that we've lost as well. Alright, so they only have four members left. <laughs> uh, oh dear. This is not going to go well, I don't think. Anyway, I'm just going to continue leveling up some of these guys. I guess. And I have nine wounded at the moment. I can only hope that they don't... Okay, where are they going now? How many do they have wounded? They've got nine wounded. Okay. So yeah, they're going to get scared off by any looters now, aren't they? And these... Oh no. Oh, this is this is very bad. Right. Uh... I'm not entirely sure how much money I'm going to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm actually just going to go in here real quick because I gained a huge amount of loot from those attackers. As you can see right here, a massive amount of stuff that I will be able to then sell. And I don't think there's anything here for me. Is there anything here for anyone else? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. He can definitely use that. And... Oh, yeah, he can definitely use that as well. You know what? Maybe I should just make these two both horse users... Because then we, we have some cavalry, a little bit, I guess, maybe. Uh, maybe it would be a good idea. Anyway, we'll just sell the rest. 3,100, pretty nice cash right there. And I'm actually going to recruit a couple more bandit brigands now. So that we have about 40 in our army. Because you never know, maybe we'll come across someone else. You know, another party that wants to do us harm. And in which case, we should be alright. Okay, yeah, they're running away from these guys. But hopefully I have enough to be able to kind of scare them off. And speaking of scare them off, I hope that uh, there will not be a Southern Empire vassal in this area that will decide to attack us as well. Oh, it seems like my horse butcher is doing it a little bit... Oh, no, it's not doing better. It's just that I've lost a whole bunch of high-tier units that were uh, taking all of my wages. Yes, that seems to be the case at the moment, which is unfortunate. Oh, well, never mind. I guess the horse butcher is not working out too well. Maybe I should build it somewhere else. I don't know. It's just seemingly that Macab is quite good. But maybe I should build it in um, uh, Baltacand or something. Yeah, Baltacand might actually be pretty good 
for us because there are many, many step horse villages in that area. And that might make sense. Okay, let's go through the trees. Make sure that we don't, don't get ourselves too killed right here. And we'll see how it goes. Oh, wow, wow, there's a big looter party right there. Should be a bit careful of that. Because that looter party could theoretically attack us. And probably do quite a bit of damage. Maybe enough for us to fail the quest. But bear in mind that our word is our bond. We're going to try and be as honorable a bandit as we possibly can. With the exception of maybe uh, killing a couple of villagers here and there. You know. I mean, it might be necessary. It might be absolutely necessary to do that at some point in the future. Okay, I think this might be the end. If we do have to fight more enemies here, we're going to have some problems. I... Yeah, no, I did it. Okay, fantastic. We actually did it. I can't believe it. For, for a second there, I actually thought that we were going to have to do more fighting, which would have been... Pretty bad. <laughs> yes, it would have been pretty bad. Okay, so what I am also going to be starting to do now is I'm going to sell my weapons. So any weapons that I have right here, for example, all of these things, I know that generally it is... Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I am going to... Um, why is this better than this? Surely this is better than that. Okay, well, whatever the case... I am actually going to go and I'm going to go in the smithy and we're going to do a little bit of smelting and, and so on. Because I have 114 charcoal, so it might make sense for me to do that. As you can see, there's actually new parts available here because of my improved smithing mod. It tells you um, which particular things that you can smelt that will give you new parts and unlock them. So that's what we're going to do a little bit of right now. There we go. Pretty nice. And I am able to refine some more as well. I think I will probably refine the hardwood because hardwood is actually quite, um, shall we say, quite heavy. And uh, yeah, I would like to be able to do that. Let's refine that as well. And then we will go and we will see if we can sell it for a decent price because I am pretty low in terms of cash a little bit. And it seems like this is probably the best place to sell this stuff. So I guess we'll do that. Iron ore. Iron can sell it for 34 here. I guess that's decent. Eh. Personally, I don't think it's that good. I think I don't have a very good trade skill. That's the reason why I'm having a bit of a bit of a difficulty here with these things. So yeah, that is a problem. So let's just sell all of that as well. There we go. Nice. All right. So that's pretty good. We have 43 days of food remaining, which is quite nice too. And how, how is my party doing? Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of bandit brigands now. I'm probably going to get rid of a couple of these. Because I don't want a massive army. About, about 30, I guess. About 30 should be pretty good for us. And let's move on now, because I think what we could do... Um, I would like to maybe ingratiate ourselves a little bit with the people about to camp, but it seems like they don't have a task for us at the moment. So probably going to have to leave that for now. So you can see here that cavalry does increase your speed, which is really nice. So I guess having a couple of units on mounts would be quite good, but you can see here that their riding skill, both of them have terrible riding skill. So doing that is maybe not the best idea and it might end up actually slowing us down so we're just going to head in here try and increase our tactics a little bit try and get our people leveled up a little bit faster as well i found that auto resolving against relatively large looter parties actually does more than uh, going in but obviously um the developers did change that uh, recently so you know it's no longer the case that you get actually literally more uh, than you would normally. So we now have 21 units, and I think that seems like a pretty decent amount for us to keep. Ah, it seems like Akalat actually does have a quest for us, which is probably going to be from a gang leader of some kind. So we'll head over there and see what we can do. Scouting is now 150, which is quite nice. Okay, so we have two people here, and I will take this one's quest. Ah, his, his associates have been counted, uh, counted, have been captured by bounty hunters, because uh, you see, I, I was about to say bounty, and then I said count, you know, county, ah, yeah, never mind, oh uh, well, okay, so let's see what I can do here, 
Yes, I can do the job. Kind of. Kind of. Okay, let's uh, let's actually go into the trade screen here because they might have a two-handed weapon for me and something that is actually going to be good for the uh, power basher skill. Ooh, long glaive. Oh, yes, I love the I love the long glaive, but it's a pole arm, so I won't be able to use it very easily at least. There's a two-handed axe right here. It is uh wait, wait oh no, no, never mind. It's it's actually not slower. It's got 102 weapon speed or swing speed. That's kind of crazy. I I'm actually kind of um a bit weirded out by the fact that there aren't that many two-handed weapons. Is it just me? I don't I don't see a huge amount of two-handed weapons. I mean, there's one here, and then obviously the 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 pole arms, and there's another one. And that's it. That seems to be it. I mean, there's some two-handed pole arms as well, but that's basically all there is. It's very strange to me. Kind of weird. Oh, well. Never mind. Okay, so, yeah, we, I don't even know what to take about that trait just yet. So, okay, here we go. Half food consumption and 5% faster movement speed in forests. I personally feel like that is going to be so incredibly fantastic for us. So I will be taking forest lore. And we do have a trait point to spend as well. So I'm actually going to be increasing. Ah, you need. Ah, look at that. My. Uh, my. Oh, no, I actually did that. Never mind. Did I? Wait a minute. Where did I? Where did I put that? Where did I put my focus point right now? Should I just reset this real quick? Yeah. OK, so I put that in there. OK, that's good then. Whew, I got a little bit confused there for a second. OK, so. We do now have maximum cunning. I can't put any more points in cunning. It's at 10 at the moment, so that's pretty good. And I think I'm probably going to probably increase my athletics even further. Should I? That's kind of insane, isn't it? That is kind of insane. I uh, I guess I could do... Oh, I have no idea, to be honest. I guess I could do some more charm because leadership is going to come in handy, I guess, at some point in the future. As well as uh, charm, of of course, coming in handy. Uh, I'm just going to do more endurance, you know. I just literally want to run around like the fastest thing in the world. So I think it should be quite fun. Okay, so now we move massively fast in forests, which is just crazy. And, oh, we're actually being attacked by some step bandits. Interesting. I'm not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why they did this. I think it's because we were nearby to the hideout. Generally, what what bandits tend to do is sometimes they will tend to be uh, much more aggressive to someone that is right next to a hideout. So bear that in mind if you're going to be you know waiting for some time next to a hideout or something like that. You're probably going to have a uh, nasty surprise. You know when uh, I don't know 30 step bandits descend upon you or something like that. But you should be able to handle them not too not too badly if you're in that kind of position to begin with. So let's just try and do some damage here. Nice. Okay, can I do some more damage here? Yeah. Oh, nice hit. Did you see that? That was that was good. That was very nice. Okay, yeah. So otherwise, I think we're going to be absolutely fine here. It's literally just a formality. Kind of surprising. That's the reason why I was kind of shocked by their by their actions. Ah, ah. There we go, 75 damage. Ooh, we barely, barely touched him with the tip of our polearm at the point there because when uh, when I extended the attack, I thought to myself, oh, wait a minute, I mistimed it a little, you know? And then all of a sudden, just about, just about got into range right at the last second, which is pretty cool. All right, so I guess what I'm going to do is I might try to mount up here. Because this is something that I've never really wanted to do in this playthrough. But if it means that I can catch up to this guy, then I guess I'll do it. Uh, it is a very, very slow horse, though, unfortunately. But I do have a pole arm that can potentially murder him. Okay, apparently not. Apparently not. There we go. Nice. Yeah, this is a much longer pole arm than I'm used to. So it is, of course, not going to be as easy for me to uh, use. But there you go. Nice victory for us. 4.2 renown and I can rescue these prisoners as well but I probably won't end up doing that uh, should I <sighs> these marauders become 
raiders and then they can't level up anymore unless you have the disciplinarian perk and I don't have that so I guess I'll just take them to sell potentially to the nearby uh, nearby town that might make the most sense okay so now I have had a lot of people become injured and now I am having difficulties going in there so I guess what I'll do is we will just go back to the tavern here oh who else do we have right here okay Ooh, this guy's really good. Look at that. He's got 200 in those proficiencies right there. And this guy's also got a decent amount of tactic skill, but we've got good tactics, so nothing really to worry about for us. And we can sell all of this. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if there's anything worth it here for me. I don't think so. Anything for anyone else? No, it doesn't seem like it. So I can just sell that for a, a nice clean 1,000. And then we can just go back into the smithy and smelt a couple more things as well. There we go. Seems pretty good to me. Okay, so, yeah, I would like to go over there, thank you. It's four days, four days. Okay, that's not going to be too bad. All right, so I think we're going to be pretty good in the hideout here. I'm just going to charge my infantry in, because I personally feel like if we can take step bandits in melee, they're probably going to lose most engagements. If we do take them from a ranged standpoint, then it's really not going to work very well, as you can see right here, taking massive damage. Don't really want to die again, if at all possible, so... I'm hopeful that I will be able to uh, prevent myself from dying by actually using a shield for once. <laughs> uh, really? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, no, no. Ah, offense, offense, more offense. There we go. Thank you. Whew. That was close. I really thought to myself that was it, but uh, thankfully I seem to be doing a little better when it comes to blocking. It seems like the, uh, the uh, frame rate has been a lot better recently, so... I guess the uh, developers have been working on optimizing a little bit more. Because I used to get mm, maybe not so good FPS in these hideouts. And it would cause me to have a bit of a problem with blocking and things like that. But maybe I'm just getting better in general. That might also be the reason. But otherwise, I think I'm pretty good to walk around here. Aha, hello there. There is a fellow. Let us do damage. Let us fight, sir. Ooh, that, oh, yeah, that guy was a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit harder than I anticipated. All right, don't shoot me. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, can you imagine, literally, a uh, blood, well, not a bloodthirsty, but shall we say a uh, rather brawny-looking fellow by the name of Bruce Fairchild would run into your hideout, and then all of a sudden he'd be like, oh, don't shoot me. Just, just uh, you know, don't shoot me, please. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I, I can imagine would be... Hilarious. Uh, it seems like one of my bandit champions just literally got killed because they didn't have a shield equipped, which was not exactly great. But I believe that is indeed a victory for us and a nice, cool thousand gold after we do damage to the bandit leader. I'm actually going to not do a duel here because I am actually pretty low in, uh, in HP. So I'm just going to see if I can maybe get around to these guys, because bear in mind that these guys are going to be using bows for the most part. And we don't really want to take too much damage from them, but as you can see, very easy victory right there, because my forces are just better than they are. That's it. That is all that it really gives us. Okay, so I will take some more prisoners here, just so that I can maybe level up my roguery skill a little bit. And they have actually a better chess piece for us. Nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's better for him. And that's better for him. There we go. Minor upgrades all around, but they are upgrades nevertheless, which I suppose is always nice. And I'm now at a pretty bad <laughs> location here with my uh, with my troops. I mean, you can see that I literally have like, how much? 19. That's actually not too bad. Once I have rested up a little bit, I should be doing all right. So let me just sell all of this. That's going to be 900. That's pretty good. And I think I... Should I sell these? Ah, no. You know what? I'm not going to sell those just yet. I'm just going to go into the smithy. And we'll just get a little bit more in the way of goods. And we unlocked the glaive head, which is pretty cool. I love the glaive in general. So if we're going to use a pole arm at some point, it might be quite fun. And we'll ransom our prisoners as well. My roguery skill doesn't seem to level up that much from ransoming which i gotta say is a bit sad but well what can you do anyway we are going to be heading into enemy territory very very soon and uh i will oh onira actually got taken look at that i was about to raid onira if you recall in the uh, previous episode 
And that doesn't seem to have gone too well for them, does it? I mean, for the Crusades, it's going great. But uh, for the Southern Empire, not so much, which I very much appreciate. I like that quite a bit because we like to see the Southern Empire fail in every single way. <laughs> uh, old grudges die hard, hey? Mm, yes. All right. So we're going to... Hmm. I think this is kind of difficult. Hmm. This is kind of difficult as well. You know what? I'm going to go around to where we were previously. And I'll see what I can do there. We're moving at 6.3. That should be fast enough. There is actually a vassal over there. But uh, we should theoretically be able to go around here without too many difficulties. And I'm hopeful that we will be able to maybe sneak into Danus Danustica. Uh, if we can get in there, that would be quite good. But here's the thing. The cool thing about having a friendly town really, really close by is that I can literally go here. I can go in and I can literally be like, oh, I'm going to raid your village. And then I'm going to run back into the friendly, friendly town, technically. So they would be harboring a fugitive, which would not be too good for them. But otherwise, Greveth has actually advanced in level. So let's give him another point in Vigor and One-Handed. Just make him into a really, really powerful one-handed weapon user, I guess. And we're just going to take hostile action and raid the village. There are 37 enemies here, though. This might be a little bit more difficult than the one beforehand. Because as you may remember from the previous episode, I did use a certain strategy to kind of get the enemy's units to close in on us in comparison to before. Okay, here we go. This is perfect. This is actually a wonderfully perfect place for us to wait. And who said bandits weren't sneaky anymore? <laughs> We're pretty sneaky. All right, so let's see what we can do here. We're just going to fight them in kind of like a bottleneck situation. And I will try and do as much damage as I possibly can. And uh, we're just going to try and do overheads as much as I can too. Overheads I usually don't like to use in these kinds of situations because having the cleaving ability um, of the wide sweeping attacks is so good that you don't really want to use anything else. But using an overhead in that case, especially when you don't have a very big amount of space to use for your swings, is definitely going to be the way to go. Anyway, there you go. That is a nice victory for us, and uh, that means that we will be able to continue raiding the village. Did I lose any people, by the way? One person. A bandit champion. Oh. Uh, <laughs> why? Why? Why always the bandit champion? Oh, well, never mind. We are able to upgrade another one, which I suppose is pretty good. And again, I won't be taking any prisoners, just in case someone does decide to come out of the woodwork and then, you know, kind of annoys us a little bit. Anyway, there we go. We got some more... Uh, Wonderful simulation bonuses. And now let's see what happens. Hopefully I will be able to raid quite a bit of this. It's actually going remarkably well at the moment. We've got 59 roguery and it's going up even more. And we are getting huge amounts of grain as well. I'm obviously not going to be able to take all of this grain eventually because my, uh, my inventory is... Oh, it's actually okay. It's actually fine at the moment, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about it. Now, I am a bit worried about... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They have literally just taken this back. How did they do that? Oh! I think I... Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I know what happened. It feels to me like one of the Kuzate Khanate vassals actually just defected. And it seems to be the person that actually owned this. Yeah, look at that. They literally just defected. Oh my, that's actually pretty bad for us. Because now I don't have a friendly friendly town to uh, utilize as a uh, backup plan. So this is a very high risk situation now. Which would be bad. If a lord comes at us right now. It, wow, we successfully raided a village. Everyone. Uh, an applause, please. An applause. Oh, uh -huh. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, and there's Yana, actually. Oh, and Mesui. What? They literally... Oh, wow, the clan. The clan themselves. They literally left. I am very surprised. So, Mesui and Yana both left the Kuzate Khanate They're with their clan, of course. And now they are a part of the Southern Empire. Wow, that's some drama right there. 
that is some heavy drama. I would not have expected them to do that because Misui is well, one of the uh, one of the more powerful vassals for the Kuzate. So, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Very, very weird. All right, well, yeah, Danustica has also be, just been taken, by the way, as well. So the Kuzate are running through there and doing quite a good job. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess what I'll do is I'll try to expand my army a little bit, maybe up to 30 or so. But we were able to, as you can see, no doubt, escape pretty easily from Yana, even though she only had 30 units. So being able to do that at a moment's notice and basically just get out of there really, really fast does, in my opinion, have a huge amount of value. So I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to do that with a larger army, but I guess we could give it our best shot. You know, we could definitely give it our best shot. Anyway, so now we have over 10,000, which is pretty good. And my horse butcher is actually doing slightly better now. It's got 87 instead of what, what was it before? 46 or something like that. So Hopefully they'll uh, continue doing what they're doing over there. And maybe if I have enough cash in the future, then I will be able to build another one. And I'll probably build another one over here because there's usually a uh, step horse village there. And is that it actually? Yeah, actually that is indeed it. So maybe that's not the best idea. It's not the best location. I think Ortengard is probably the best location for a horse butcher so it might very well be the case that i will go there instead and do that but otherwise i thank you very much for watching we'll do a town raid in the next episode and try and uh, maybe go in there and see if we can uh, get some extra cash from that i thank you very much for watching once again and i will see you next time